Welcome to this brief podcast on sociological theorizing. I'm Professor Walters, and the purpose of this uh, brief vodcast is to provide you with an overview of the idea of theorizing. In sociology, we have lots and lots of courses on research methods, meaning typically quantitative research methods in the logico-deductive paradigm. Theorizing is much more complex and much more difficult, yet we rarely address how to do this, break it down into steps to make the whole idea of theorizing uh, a concept or an idea or a set of skills that can be learned and that are accessible to students. Perhaps the most difficult thing in sociology to learn to do is how to frame meaningful questions that can be answered with empirical data and plausible explanations for those empirical patterns that can likewise be corroborated using social science research methods. And this elementary overview or introduction to the whole idea of theorizing in this unit, I will be focusing on, and you will be focusing on, some basic elementary steps in the direction of learning how to theorize or how to create a theory that can explain these complex social realities around us. The key ideas are theorizing, tacit knowledge, uh, which is a concept that comes from the work of Charles Pierce. Uh, uh, more about that, and you'll see more about it in the reading, but it, it refers to this taken for granted world around us, often a world that we, it's not like the unconscious, but it's a world that we take for granted and use and apply as we frame our actions. Abduction is a much more difficult concept, and uh, it'll take you a while to get the idea of this. People who do theory and theorizing after their first theory course it's a lifetime pursuit. But abduction is one of those great ideas that bring together a lot of disparate studies and create from that a, a, a meaningful theory, like the theory of relativity or the theory of evolution, which has been corroborated so many times now that we don't even think of it as a theory. Theory begins, of course, and abduction begins with guesses or hunches, often about the most ordinary social reality, such as you will find in that brief article uh, by Swedberg, uh, using the example from Pierce, as he hunts down uh, the person he or a person whom he believes to have lifted or stolen uh, his watch. We'll also look at the basic steps of theorizing as outlined by, by Swedberg. And here we're really looking at this, his preliminary idea of theorizing. And then finally, the two by two table, which is basic to sociology. Uh, if you don't learn anything else, you should learn how to think through a two by two table that we trace back to the work of Robert Merton, but even before that to uh, C. Wright Mills and the sociological imagination, which will be part of the readings in uh, next week. So again, to reiterate, uh, the goal is learning to theorize. So we have great progress in social science re research methods, but less development in how we handle teaching theory. Uh, the, the whole idea of personalism in theory points to the, the central role of the individual and to especially cognition and theorizing, that is, thinking of theory and theorizing as a cognitive activity rather than as something you memorize. And once again, uh, we'll look at the sociological imagination uh, to sort of get our feet on the ground with our, this personal idea of 
the individual or the standpoint of the individual and then you know, larger and larger uh, shared information circle. While much of sociological theory, and especially as taught routinely at the undergraduate level, focuses on these large scale theories of uh, Marx, Durkheim, Weber, in, in, the, in modern social theory, these are, it's important and it's a framework, but we're really looking at middle range theories, that is, theories that provide hypotheses that are testable or falsifiable. They're empirically verifiable statements. So here, the term sociological theory refers to the logically interconnected sets of propositions from which empirical uniformities can be derived. And these uniformities should be established via empirical testable hypotheses. That's a mouthful. It will probably take us all semester uh, to figure out what that means and learn how to. If you look quickly at the uh, article by Swedberg on the course site, and I would recommend only looking quickly, especially at the uh, highlighted sections, Swedberg divides theorizing or theory into, or the scientific enterprise into three different uh, phases, theorizing, the actual theory, and then the testing of the theory. One aspect of theory and theorizing that is stressed um, by Swedberg and by contemporary uh, theorist is the role of empirical data. This often flies in the face of textbook definitions of the scientific method. Empirical data should drive the theory process. It's best to let this data drive the process. Uh, Durkheim noted this also, uh, but this was a huge debate you know, throughout the 19th century. We move from things to ideas and not from ideas to things. Again, with Weber, theory follows the facts and not vice versa. So an example of this is if, if you begin with a large theory of just, for example, uh, class conflict, then everything you see will look like class conflict. Whereas if you begin on the ground and you look at the empirical realities, you may see that class conflict may play a role, but there are other aspects of the conflict, gender, ethnicity, religion, that are not really class conflicts. I mean, once again, we're looking, beginning with the empirical evidence and then building out and pulling from known theoretical concepts and concepts that we develop to theorize. So it's an iterative process. In other words, it's cyclical. We use the theory to, uh, to develop the theory from the data, and then we use the theory to test the data. Uh, and once again, a, a very complex topic. I love the sections uh, in Swedberg on abduction and guessing. There are also some excerpts and, and the readings uh, and those little, those little readings that are, are attached to uh, one, of the, one of the folders. The tacit knowledge is taken for granted. And here, this is like, what's going on? And it's part of our taken for granted world where we, we, we manage to get through the day with a lot of information that we don't think about. Remember when you lost your keys and you, you go, wow, where did I put my keys down? And you know where you put your keys down somewhere in your mind, but you may have to recall. You may have to go through your entire day to remember exactly what you did when you set your keys down. Uh, a lot of that comes into play and in taken for granted knowledge or how we frame things. So the questions are like, what's going on? How did it happen? When did it happen? And why did it happen? And so for those of you who are looking for a, a quick and pat answer to a multiple choice question or something like that, uh, know this. Uh, eventually you'll understand it, but kind of memorize this and, and think about it as, as part of your memory. The basic steps of theorizing, and this is really that early stage of theorizing, Observe and choose something to investigate. Name and formulate the central concept. Build out the theory. Then complete the tentative theory, including the explanation. You'll find this in the Swedberg article highlighted. 
Finally, this will be a really quick walkthrough of, of where we want to go. And again, remember, one of the goals is to learn to think using fourfold tables. So the full research process, we name, conceptualize, broaden into a concept, complete the tentative theory through fuller explanations. Uh, here's an example. And again, we'll have to work through this very carefully. Globally speaking, women earn less than men. Not always true, and we'll find examples where that's not true. Here's an example of a theorizing about that. Women have lower levels of education than men. Well, we know that's not true, but but if we postulated it as a hypothesis, we could test that and then show that where, when, and how it is true. Lower levels of education result in lower paying jobs. Women have lower paying jobs. Again, key, these are all testable propositions. If you create it as a fourfold table, this is what the initial table would look like. High, low job status pay. Most of the men, according to the theory, not necessarily factually true, men would be more likely to be in high status, high income paying jobs, women in low income, low status jobs. Again, it's falsifiable, but thinking about your theory using these logically connected steps and fourfold tables will help you get your feet on the ground in theorizing as opposed to simply theory.